Good afternoon everybody and welcome to your Sunday afternoon viewing. Um, I thought I'd include some of my own experiences here, um, especially the one that happened to me the night before last week's release, which has unsettled me a little bit thinking about it, but see what you think. Thank you. From being a child, maybe three and a half to four, that was when my weird experiences started. Um, the odd little things here and there that you don't kind of... You remember, but you don't really think about too deeply until you get older. And then in 1976 was my very close encounter with a UFO, which was witnessed by my friend as well in the school field. And we were playing, doing the usual handstands, making daisy chains... It was the summer because we were only allowed on the primary school field in the summer. And I said to her, what's that noise? I could hear a, a droning noise in the distance. And we kind of looked round and shrugged and carried on playing and the noise got louder. And then at some point I thought to look up and there was a massive craft above us. Huge, great big thing taking up the sky. From the side it would have looked like a sausage cigar shape it was covered in mirrored mosaic tiles really small ones like you'd have in a bathroom or a kitchen and underneath there was writing um, I don't remember all of the writing I just remember there being uh, a symbol like a trident like a three pronged fork and at the bottom of it was a tick that came off it it went over us, it was so loud, and I looked round to see if anybody was looking. And the perimeter of this, the size of this thing was causing like a perimeter around us. So everybody else was on the outside playing and carrying on as normal. Nobody had seen this apart from me and my friend. And it passed slowly overhead, this really horrible, deep droning noise. Now by my estimates, I said in my book, it would have been about 100 feet up. <laughs> But I am absolutely rubbish at judging distance and height. And it was only this summer that I was sat in the garden with my friend at her house when I was staying over. And we were talking about the house and, and the height and everything. And I said to her, how tall do you think your house is? And she said about 42 feet. And when I looked, like an average door is about six foot-ish. When I looked and I, I worked it all out, I think that this craft was about 50 foot above us. Bearing in mind we were only little at the time, like 1976, I was seven. We were both seven. And this thing was so low. Anyway, it took off, didn't change trajectory, it didn't speed away, it, didn't, it just glided out of, out of view. We watched it go over the trees by the... There was a water tower near the school. We watched it go over the trees and the water tower and just disappear out of view. Something so vast. Somebody else in Leeds must have seen that. They must have done. It was huge. But I've never heard any other reports. I was so excited when my mum picked me up from school. I remember jabbering on about this thing. And she actually, she never doubted a word that I said about anything. Any of my experiences, she took on board. Bless her. And she rang... The BBC, she rang ITV, which was actually Yorkshire Television back then. And she also rang Leeds Bradford Airport to see if there'd been anything reported or in the sky or if they'd been filming something or absolutely nothing at all. So that was my close encounter with the UFO. I have seen other, other things since, but that was the, the biggest and had most impact on me. Although I've never understood this. To me, UFOs are not the top of my subject matter. You would think, having an encounter like that, you would be kind of more curious and have a real thing for it, but I, I never have. And it's just, they fascinate me if I see something, but it's not my top subject matter. It just, it's astounding to me. So in the autumn of 1993, we'd been invited to my husband's colleagues for dinner, um, about an hour away from where we lived at the other side of York. So we went over and we 
sat chatting and we decided to go over to the pub. I wasn't bothered about a drink, so I said I'd drive back home. So we spent the night in the pub, went back to theirs for coffee and then set off early hours of the morning. Hubby promptly got in the passenger seat and folded his arms and went to sleep. So I was driving, I got onto the A64, major dual carriageway that leads from the coast right up to Leeds. Usually pretty busy, even in the early hours it's busy. Um, first thing I noticed was that there were virtually no cars at all. No lorries, no cars. I was driving along, had the radio on, I had the window down a bit. Um, there was like patchy fog that was covering the road like in a blanket and then it would clear and then it would appear again. Anyway, that, that kind of dissipated as we got nearer towards Leeds. And then about seven miles from home, I started feeling really anxious and I'm not an anxious person, really. But this was, I don't know, I was on edge. And by now, we were in, you know, street lit roads. There was nothing, no spooky thing going on. Anyway, the nearer that I got to home, the worse this feeling got and it was more like terror was building. And I, I honestly couldn't understand why. He was still asleep, still had the radio on, still had the window down. Couldn't see, There was nothing, there was, like I said, very few cars at all. In fact, the whole journey I probably passed about five cars, which is ridiculous for an hour's drive. Anyway... I approached Horsforth Roundabout and by this point I was absolutely petrified with no reason at all. I just couldn't wait to get home. So I started the descent down the hill. There's grass banks on either... There's Going down the hill, there's one lane going down, two lanes coming up, then there's a verge, a path, and then grass banking and trees along the top. All the way down, basically. Then as you get to sort of near enough the bottom of the hill... There's a little private woodland that they do motorbike scrambling in, um, which you're not supposed to go in. So there's quite a dense area of trees. And then you get to the road that goes over. It leads into um, the road that goes over the railway line that runs to Keithley and Skipton. There's the River Air, and then there's the Leeds-Liverpool Canal, all running parallel. And as I got to just going over the railway line, there's a bus cut out on the left and I saw something stood there a massive dark shaggy shape it was absolutely enormous <clears throat> and I knew that if I looked at it I was going to die that was the that was in my head if I look at it I'll die so I put my foot to the floor sped past it and as I passed it I looked in the rearview mirror and it stepped out into the middle of the road where I'd just driven by the time I got home, I was—I couldn't wake him up. I was in a real state. When we got round to the back of the house, couldn't get the key in the door. I was shaking that much. And we got in and he said, what's the matter? So I was telling him. And he said, oh, it'll have been somebody in fancy dress. And I said, not, not at this two o'clock in the morning-ish. He said, oh, well, it'll have been a tree. I said, trees don't step out into the road. Anyway, it took me a while to get to sleep. And then the next day I had to go up and see both my mum and dad. They were div long divorced by this time, but they both lived within a quarter of a mile of each other. But I had to go up this road to get to their houses. I thought, I'm just going to check, see what it was. Anyway, as I drove past, I looked across and all there was, was the trees and, and bushes had been trimmed back and they were held back by a like a two bar concrete fence. So there was nothing anywhere near that lay-by that I could have mistaken for anything like that. The internet was only just coming into existence and I didn't have it. So it was really hard to try and... Well, I just couldn't find out what it was. I'd not seen any limbs, I'd not seen any eyes, but I knew when it stepped into the road it was boring. Its, its eyes were boring through the car. Anyways, as time went on, I got the internet and... I started researching things like Bigfoot in America, but that was obviously in America. You don't think of things like that in this country. Um, and then I thought, I'm going to write a book about paranormal leads. So I had two articles. One of them was half page in the Pudsey Times. And the other one was like a paragraph, a paragraph, a column in the Leeds Weekly News. Asking for people to send me their paranormal stories. 
So once a week on my way home from work, I'd call in at the newspaper offices and pick the letters up. And there were, there were a good hundred letters. And I, I got home this particular day and I was reading through the letters. I was having a cuppa and I nearly dropped my drink. This letter contained information from the, a lad who worked the twilight shift at a supermarket nearby. And he, he got a push bike and he used to bike past the end of my street and down into the village to get home. And it was sort of quarter to three in the morning. So this particular morning, he'd gone past the end of my street. He'd got down to nearly where the church is and opposite the church, crouched in the road, were what he described as two of these things that I'd seen. He said they were completely silent. He stopped his bike and got off. He didn't know what to do. He couldn't go past them because he didn't know what they were. And he said they all of a sudden stood up, turned, looked at him, and then they went off behind the row of shops opposite the church on the left. So I put everything down and I shot down there because it was only sort of 400 metres, maybe 500 from where I lived. I went round the back of the shops and all there is is a couple of garages and a wall, it's all enclosed. There's only one way in and one way out. So where these things have disappeared to, I have no idea. So for the past year and a half, I've had this anomaly that happens when I'm reading my Kindle on a night. Now, hubby goes to bed about nine o'clock because he has to be up really early on the morning. I'm a night owl, so it can be three or four hours before I go to bed after that. I get into bed and I lay on my left hand side with my Kindle in my left hand. I've got nightshade on it because that stops the room lighting up and it also protects your eyes. So I noticed above me in my peripheral vision was like a halo of LED lights. And when I looked up, it disappeared. But when I was staring at my Kindle, it was there. Sometimes it's bright, sometimes it's dim. Sometimes it looks like there's something coming out of the middle of it, like climbing down out of the middle of it, but that's not very often, that's quite rare. Anyway, one particular night it had moved and it was to my, between one and two o'clock, over my shoulder. Now I had my arm out of bed, over the quilt, and then I started feeling a bit chilly. I'd put this, whatever this is, down to a vision anomaly. I just thought it was something to do with the light reflecting on my eyes or something from the Kindle. Anyway, this particular night, like I say, it's between one and two o'clock. And my arms started getting cold, so I, I got the quilt to pull over to cover my shoulder up and I blocked this thing out. Now, to me, if that had have been a vision anomaly, it would have still been there. So whatever this thing is which I have no idea what it is. I've asked a couple of people and they haven't got a clue either. Whatever it is, it's there. Just that I can't see it unless I'm viewing it through my peripheral. Anyway, this is accompanied by, not every night, but most nights, is accompanied by what looks like a pair of dim white eyes. And they can be up by it, or they can be my one or two o'clock, or they can actually appear on my left between me holding my Kindle and the bedside cabinet. They can dot round all over, but it's just this one pair of milky white looking kind of eyes. And again, I can't look at them directly because they disappear. Last week, there was sometimes this, this halo of lights, like I say, it's either dim or it's bright, but sometimes it's not there at all and it's, very rare again that it's not there but if it isn't there and I think about it it appears almost like I'm calling it in anyway this particular night it hadn't appeared and I thought I didn't think about it enough and then at my one o'clock not far away from me maybe a foot the size and shape of a rugby ball appeared and inside was the most vivid black and white, but it was fizzing. It was like zigzags fizzing all over. And it lasted for five seconds. It looked like I could have reached out and touched it, but I didn't have much time to react to anything. It just appeared, did this fizzing thing, and then disappeared again. And I, I have no clue what this is all about. I've no idea. 
a couple of nights I've heard weird noises. One night in particular when this halo light was really bright and the eyes were darting about, it felt like a big shape was moving about in the bedroom. And it I don't get scared very often, but it did kind of unnerve me a little bit. So I sort of put the Kindle down and went to sleep. But there was also a night when this thing had appeared and it suddenly disappeared. I noticed it disappear. And as I was laid in bed, I could hear what sounded... We have, we're on the flight path to Leeds Bradford Airport, so it's quite usual to hear planes coming in and out. But this particular night, I could hear this plane and it sounded like it wasn't following the flight path. It was coming directly towards the house. And just as I thought about getting out of bed to look out of the window, I couldn't move at all. I was fully conscious. I could see the clock. I could move my eyes. But something was preventing me getting out of bed and having a look. And the noise of this plane... Well, put it this way. If I'd have pulled back the curtains, I would not have been surprised to see a jumbo jet hovering outside my window. It was that loud. Never disturbed hubby. It was that loud and then it it kind of backed off and faded away. And then I found I could move. Obviously, I looked out. There was nothing there. So if anybody's got any explanations, I would love to know. So my most recent event was six days ago on the 29th of October. I'd been out all day in Whitby with my mate Lucy for goth weekend. I'd been back a good few hours, done tea and everything. Gaz had gone to bed because he had to be up for work the next day. So I was sat talking to my mate on Messenger. Got the back door open because, for one thing, I'm a fresh air fiend, unless it's really, really cold. And for another, I'm not up and down every two minutes, letting Bob in and out. So I'd noticed earlier on that it was really, really quiet. Like, pin drop quiet. Just It was just a passing thought that there wasn't a lot of noise because normally you hear people going in and out of the garages or cars pulling up or cars on the main road even because we've, we've got a main road at the end of the Crescent. But there was none of the usual noise. It was just really still. There was the odd firework in the distance, but that was about it. And that was few and far between. Anyway, I decided I needed another bottle of pop. And I keep the pop at the bottom of the stairs next to the front door in the kitchen. There's the big step at the bottom and I put it all on there. Anyway, I've got the living room lamp on. So I don't, if I go in the kitchen, I never put the light on. So as I got to the kitchen doorway, I could see through the closed kitchen blinds that the solar security light had been triggered. Now it's fixed to the edge of the fence and it shines onto the man cave so that you can get the key in the padlock in the dark. It's got quite a good beam on it as well. I can get to the nearly past the first bin and it kind of it comes on. So I thought, oh, it was probably a cat or a fox because we've got plenty of those around here that's triggered it. And then as I walked towards the front door to get the pop off the step on the right, there was I noticed we've got a UPVC door and it's got a strip of glass, frosted glass, down the middle of the top half. And I noticed down at the bottom towards the middle there was a patch of condensation, like somebody had breathed on the glass. So as I, as I got to the door, I touched it and it was on the outside. Anyway, I, I had a look out, couldn't see anybody. Everybody looked like they'd gone to bed. I mean, this was half eleven, quarter to twelve at night. But it was just, it was really puzzling. That There was no other patches of condensation on any of the other windows, because I checked. So I got my bottle of pop and I came back in here and I was telling my mate what, was, what had gone on. And he told me to get Gaz up to go check round. I said, well, I've had a look out. I can't see anything. Everybody's gone to bed. The street's really quiet. The double gates and the single gate were still closed. There was just nobody about. So when I went to bed, about three quarters of an hour later, this patch of condensation had completely disappeared. Like I say, I could have accepted it if there'd been patches of con condensation on other windows, but there wasn't. It was just this one patch that had vanished in, in the space of three quarters of an hour. When I've measured, it's just short of four foot from the path because we have a step up into the kitchen. So taking that into account from the path, 
to that point is about four foot off the ground. Which, if something had breathed on the window, it would have only had to have been four foot high, whatever it was. It's another one of those mysteries that I keep coming across. And that, my lovely viewers, concludes this week's video. Hope you enjoyed my personal accounts. Next week is Remembrance Sunday, so there won't be a video. Um, I'll be out all day. But on the 20th, do tune in, because I've got a doozy for you. And I know this subject freaks a lot of people out, so I'm not going to tell you, but tune in and see. So until then, stay safe, take care, and thank you all. Much appreciated.